Hi everyone, it's Monday again, another week and um, what a bizarre message from our Prime Minister last night, um, Boris Johnson. It means some of us are left feeling quite confused again about what we're doing, but we all know that we're still having to stay home for the time being to keep ourselves safe. We know that there are a few relaxed restrictions, but it still pretty much means the same thing, that you can stay with your family members, you're still not going out to meet friends, you're staying at home as much as you possibly can, um, and schools unfortunately still aren't open yet. But working towards the hope of school being open, which is fantastic, because we can't wait to see you all. So here's another cooking video. Now, I have been really craving cookies for some bizarre reason, not really sure why. Um, so I thought today, I'm just going to try and get the recipe up on my phone. I thought today I'd make some oat and raisin cookies, because uh, I quite like those in my, in my diet. I quite enjoy an oat and raisin cookie. It reminds me of my times when I used to live in America, and that was something that they used to eat quite a lot over there. So, uh, there are quite a few ingredients for this one. Um, but I actually don't have all of the ingredients at home, so I've switched some of the things out. So, um, I have got raisins in this one, but obviously if you prefer uh, chocolate chip cookies, you could always put those in instead. Be prepared, it might make your cookie slightly more gooey. Um, so this recipe has got raisins in it, but like I said, if you want to add a different fruit, like sultanas, or you wanted to add cocoa, um, coco well you could add coconut, that would be fine. Or uh, chocolate chips, That's you're more than welcome to do that. I don't have wholemeal flour, which this tells me to use, so I've just used normal plain flour. Um, and I don't have dark brown soft sugar, which is what the recipe asks for. So I've used demerara sugar, but you could also get away with using caster sugar. You tend to find a lot of these recipes t just taste slightly different, and the consistency is maybe slightly different. Um, so here is the uh, ingredients. If I can get you to see those. What I will do is what I normally do, and that is put them in the little explanation bits so you can see them. So, it's, this one is very, very simple. It's a very simple recipe. It's not going to take us very long at all. As always, I have put the oven on. It is at 180 degrees, gas mark four, as always. I have washed my hands. Um, hopefully, you will have asked your grown-up first before you start doing your cooking. And as always, I'm just going to make myself a little bit safer. So we're still keep, keeping sure we're washing our hands. So I'm just going to add a little bit of anti-back on my hands um, just to make sure that they're as clean as they can be. Now, I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see the ingredients. Uh, but what I have actually done, just to make this a little bit quicker and less boring for you all, is I've actually put all of the dry ingredients already in a bowl. So all you have to do for this recipe is you melt the butter. When it's cooled, you add the egg. Then you mix those two things together and pour them into all the dry ingredients. So I've weighed out my dry ingredients and rather than getting lots of bowls dirty, which means lots of washing up, I've added them all into one bowl already. So let's turn this down so you can have a little look and I will explain to you. Now the one thing you can't see is this. So we need this and this and this and this and this and this. I'll move that backwards. I can maybe add that in there so you can see it. So if I just go through again, I showed you the ingredients, but I'm going to tell you them again really super quickly. So I added, uh, the first thing I did was to put 75 grams of butter into a bowl. Now that needs to be melted. It suggests you do it over a cooker. I'm going to just pop mine in the microwave. But what you don't want to do is have boiling hot butter and then add your egg to it because otherwise it turns into scrambled egg. So what I'm going to do, just while we're chatting, the microwave will be on in the background, I'm going to melt my butter in the microwave. Um, short little bursts, as we always say, so I've put it in for 30 seconds, let's see what happens. Uh, and then that'll give it time to cool before I add the egg. So I have also got one large egg, which I'm going to add into the butter. I then had 175 grams of, it says on the recipe, dark brown sugar but you could use caster sugar. I, however, use demerara sugar because that is brown sugar. It's just not soft brown sugar as the recipe suggests you need. Uh, 200 grams of oatmeal, so I just use normal porridge oats. Uh, 150 grams of raisins, but like I said, you could switch that out for sultanas or for dried apricots. 
um, cranberries, you could add in chocolate chips, you could do a mixture of some of them together, see what you would prefer. Uh, it also asks for 110 grams of wholemeal flour, don't have it, so I just use plain flour. So that's in the bowl as well. It asks for half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, so that is already in the bowl, and half a teaspoon of salt, so that is also already in the bowl. Now I'm just going to check my butter and see what that looks like. So it's almost melted, as you can see, that was only 30 seconds in there. I'm going to pop it in for another 15 seconds and then that should be good to go. And all we have to add to that is one large egg. Now in my bowl, as you can see, that's all the dry ingredients. So everything I've just read out to you, apart from the butter and apart from the egg, everything else is in that bowl. So I'm just going to give my butter a bit of a mix because obviously we want all of the butter melted, not just some of it. And this is what we're going to add. This is what's going to make our dough out of the dry ingredients that we've already added to the bowl. So my butter is completely melted, as you can see. So I'm just going to leave that a few minutes and let it cool down. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to mix these ingredients in. So in here, I've got the flour, the sugar, the oats, the bicarbonate of soda, the salt, uh, and the raisins. So I'm going to give that a good old mix in. Now what you want to do is make sure that all of the bits that are right at the bottom of the bowl, as you can see when I mix it, you'll see it change colour slightly because the first thing I put in my bowl was sugar and that's the darkest. So I want to make sure that my sugar is well and truly mixed into the rest of my mixture. So let's keep mixing until I know that it's all in. Now if I drag the spoon across the bottom, there we go, I can see everything that should be mixed together is mixed together. Now the other thing you want to do is make sure that you've well and truly mixed your bicarbonate of soda in because that tastes disgusting if you've got it in a lump. Ugh. Did you all have a fabulous V-Day celebration? I hope so. Weren't we lucky with the weather? I spent most of mine socially distancing but with my neighbours and we had the best day and hopefully we'll get to see some of you and some of the staff and what they were up to in our video that comes out on Wednesday. Miss Greenman Sparrow is doing an amazing job of putting all these videos together. She's very clever. Not like me. She doesn't know how to do technology. Right, so all of that is all mixed in. The butter has had time to cool down a little bit. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add one egg. I just want to make sure that that is cool because if I add that in, it is going to go a bit scrambled eggs. Because it's still a bit warm, what I'm actually going to do is just put a little bit of cold water on the bottom of the bowl. Now, what we don't want to do is cool it down too much because the butter will then turn back into a solid lump. And that's not what we want either. So if I use a little sponge and I just add a bit of cold water to the bottom of the bowl, it will help to just cool it down a little bit, which means that when I add my egg to it, it won't scramble. Because that also would not be something that we want. Right, let's keep adding a little bit more cold water to it. Cool. And like I said, making sure you've got a grown up to help you with these things is really important. Because this could get a little bit tricky. On your hands. There we go. Right, now that's cooled down, that's much, much better. Let's pop it on my little towel there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack the egg in. This is always everyone's favourite bit. We all love cracking a good egg, don't we? So I'm going to crack it once on the side. It's a nice big slit down through the middle. One thumb one side, one thumb the other side and pull it apart. You have to go really careful not to squash it because the last thing you want is shell 
in your mixture. That would not be good and it does not taste nice at all. It would make your cookies much more crunchy than you're expecting them to be. So I'm going to get a fork because what they want you to do is well and truly mix this together. So we've learned how to do this in stepping stones. You're just going to whisk your egg into your butter. So that means you're using the fork and you're doing lots and lots, very gently, because we don't want it to come out over the bowl, lots and lots of little circular motions that mix your egg into your butter. And then as soon as it's all mixed in, you can see it's changed in colour, changed in thickness, all right, but it hasn't gone into little lumps of scrambled egg, which is really good. That's just what we want. And now we're going to add all of that into our bowl. So I'm just going to use my spoon to make sure that I've got all the, all the butter and all the egg out of the bowl. Sometimes it can cling to the sides, which then becomes a little bit frustrating. Okay, so we've got that all mixed in. So now what I'm going to do is mix all of that wet mixture into my dry mixture. It doesn't look like much, but it's going to make the perfect consistency for some little cookies, which is just what we're after. Now remembering again, when we made the oat cookies, those spread quite a bit, didn't they? So as things start to melt in the, in the oven, uh, it will start to spread out your mixture and make it bigger than it was. But it also means that all the ingredients that you've got will combine a little bit better. They'll mix in a little bit better because they'll start to be mixed with the hot ingredients. So like when sugar melts, we know what happens to sugar. When it melts, it goes from a hard granular consistency into something that looks more like a liquid doesn't it that's how we make caramel and that's what's going to happen in the oven with these so there we have it it's all mixed in and it still looks as if it's going to be crumbly but when you get your hands in now it's going to make a nice little dough and that is what we're going to put in the oven. What I'm trying to do is make sure that everything that's on the bottom of the bowl is mixed in. Okay, so what I've done, as always, got myself a little baking tray, I've put some tin foil on the top and I've sprayed it with some oil to stop the cookies from sticking. So what it says to do in our recipe, we know we always follow a recipe, it makes life much easier, doesn't it? when you follow a recipe, is to put the mixture in your hands, make it into a ball and pop it on the tray. And that is about as difficult as it gets. It's a nice easy one this one, isn't it? So we're gonna make it into a ball and we're gonna pop it on the tray. Now, what it does suggest you do, just give it a little bit of a push. So it's a slightly flatter ball that's because when you then put it in the oven we know it's going to spread so the cookie's going to drop down and get a little bit thinner so what we don't want to do is put them too close together we want to make sure that we've left enough space for these cookies to be able to spread as they're cooking in the oven so i'm just going to do enough that fit on my tray without being close. It's like socially distanced cookies, isn't it? They're abiding to the government's rules, keeping themselves safe. Give that a squash down. Right, there we go. Our cookies are made. So what we're going to do, we're going to pop them in the oven. I'm just gonna wash my hands, they're a bit sticky. We're gonna pop them in the oven and they're gonna go in the oven for between 16 to 18 minutes. And that's until they're a nice golden brown colour. So we like them to be a nice golden brown, don't we? We know that they're cooked then. So that's it. There we go. And as always, I will come back to you when the beeper starts making that really strange sound on the cooker. See you in a minute. There it goes. Let's have a look. See what they look like. 
so as always, I've got something to keep my hands protected from the heat and make sure you ask your grown up to help you with this bit because it's a hot oven. Right, so let's see what happens. Turn off that frustrating sound. Whoa. Well, they smell amazing. So if they taste anything like they look, they'll be really delicious. So there you have it. Oatmeal raisin cookies. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I think you're all probably becoming, oh gosh, can you see the sun? <laughs> Reflecting off the tin foil. Let's move this way. That was very bright, wasn't it? You're all becoming cooking whizzes during this time at home. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy them. Make sure you let them cool first before you try to eat them though, because they are going to be very, very hot. I'm just pushing them to the back of the side so that they don't get touched by any little fingers that might be here. Um, thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed them. Take care of yourselves and I will see you again very soon. Bye.